What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, John from the Gamer Duo here, welcoming you back to some more Danganronpa. <sighs> Last episode, we got a very, very sad notice. Well, I mean, it's not really a notice if you see it in person, but you need to check it out before watching this episode, because a lot of stuff happened, and I'm very sad about it. But we're going to continue investigating the murder of Chihiro. And we left off where we literally have talked to Toko. And, you know, unfortunately, we have to tell Bayakuya about freaking how Toko is, you know, wants to be your lover and all that stuff. And yes, I'm trying to enunciate his name because I was talking to both of the people that I talk to a lot, my best buds, about what the heck is going on. And they're like, can you pronounce his name correctly? Like, in a very, very nice way. And I'm just like, I, I can try. <laughs> so I'm going to continue to try, and I'll be slow about it. But yes. <sighs> hey, Bayakuya. Do you, you think you could ask her to come out of her room, I mean? That's fine. Sure, whatever. Huh? You're going to talk to her, Bayakuya? Why do I have to say his name like a hundred times now? Well, wow. Also, my mic just decided to fall, but that's okay, because we're going to just hold on to it, apparently. Wow, I guess you can be nice when you want to. Bayakuya stood in front of the door, not making a sound, and pressed the doorbell. Ding dong! Sorry, I'm trying to put my mic back on. After a few moments. What do you want? Leave me alone. You are all so, 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 so annoying. Ah, uh, Bakula. I'm sorry. I couldn't c c keep our promise. But d d don't worry. Never again. I I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. It just keeps falling. What the heck? It's one of those it fell once, so it's going to continue to fall constantly. I really need to get a new stand. And then with that, the door slammed shut. Mm. Even Bayaki or Bayakuya <laughs> couldn't pull it off. Hmm. There's nothing else we can do. Let's get back to the investigation. Hold on. Hey, Bayakuya. <laughs> what was Toko talking about just now? Something about a promise? What? Hmm. Oh, I have no idea. Another one of her delusions, I'm sure. But... but if I say I don't know, that means I don't know. Just let Hina take care of her. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. I'll stand here and keep an eye on her. Let's go. Well, then, let's go. Without wanting, uh, waiting for a reply, Bayakuya sped away. Bayakuya! Bayakuya! <laughs> and I hurried to catch up. I tried to talk to him several times as we walked, but he didn't even look back to s or let alone say anything. He just kept walking towards the, his destination. Finally, his feet brought him to a stop in, a, in front of a certain room. The, the library? Come on, let's go in. Oh, there's a lot in here. Knock it off. What does a death slam matter right now? What matters right now? That's a better question. What do you know that I don't? Um, is the evidence that proves that Genocide Jack really in the library? Don't make me, repeat myself. Don't make me say it again. Is it 
this. There's no point in checking it. We already we need to find real clues. If I remember, on the other side of this door, it's the archive, right? Hurry up, go inside. Oh, here. Let's go. It all it'll all make sense once you're inside. Whoa, so many books and files. And so much dust, too. Words. I would say there's enough value in this place to endure the dust. That's just a security camera. This shelf is stuffed tight with files. Without really thinking about it, I picked one at random. Ah, you have a sharp eye. Indeed, to select that file, huh? That's, right. That's the report card on a presidential assassination. The original one is kept in the National Library. I want to be... It won't be declassified for another 30 years. Are you sure you want to look at it now? <laughs> no telling whose crosshairs you might wind up peek in... Wind up in for peeking at it. Without making a second a sound, I return the file onto the shelf. It's a wooden box. It's empty. Although, judging by the smudges in the dust, it looks like something was inside of it. I wonder what it was. There was an extension cord plugged in there. It proved very useful while I was in the library. The extension cord, huh? Okay, what is this lamp? Is Bayakuya Bayak, gonna get mad at this lamp? Probably. Whoa, 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 wait, what? He's okay with this one? Okay, fine. It's a desk lamp. Oh, yeah, it's the same one I saw Bayakuya using in the library before. What? Do you have a problem with that lamp? It was here before, then I moved it over there. It's too dark over there, so I thought I'd put it to good use. Oh, that's all it was? Never mind. I thought it was something else. That's enough. Those documents are dangerous. Dangerous? They detail all the people who control the world from behind the scenes. The dangerous truth for a commoner. You mean like members of the diet or something? No, I mean the ones with real power, the secret council, controlling everything from the shadows. If you're ready to, dis to be disappeared for it, take a look. There are some very interesting people in there. Y you're just k kidding, right? Am I? Oh, I'll just go for now. Or I'll let it go for now. There's a ton of thick files stuffed onto the bookshelf. If you're thinking of looking through any of them, let me give you a little warning. Those files are filled with graphic, disturbing photos of all kinds of crime scenes. It's the kind that any normal person wouldn't ever want to look at, so be careful. Huh? What do you mean? All those files are the investigation reports related to different cold cases. Those are internal documents of the police for police eyes only. They're the kind of thing you'd expect to you'd expect to leak. Oh. Oh. So you're finally beginning to understand the true splendor of this library. The entire reason I was interested in the library is because of this room right here. It's home to the classified government documents, police records. There's things no ordinary people would ever see. Isn't it magnificent? This can't be for real, right? Such ignorance. That's your guy's problem. Anything that doesn't fit in your perceived reality, you label it a lie. Well, it's not a, that. It's just... It's not like I could totally refuse to believe it. I mean, there's so much. How could anyone have put it all together? Hmm. I suppose it goes to show just how pro power, how much power help speak truly wields. Perhaps <laughs> the mastermind may have wanted us to provide or wanted to provide us with enough entertainment to keep us from getting bored. Um, it's no use. I can't get up with all this. It's just too unreal. Hmm. What's wrong? You still can't believe it. How about you? How can you believe it so easily? Things like that are unusually impossible. What? what do you mean, usually? Usual, normal, ordinary, simple. Those things don't exist anywhere in the real world. If you don't understand what is actually re um, what actually represent, what they actually represent, you don't actually understand the nature of anything. You don't pull punches, do you? Besides, what do you consider usual? Is it based on your common sense, right? But what makes you think that your own common sense applies to me at all? 
The documents gathered here are genuine. I have mul I have reviewed them multiple times, so no doubt. Hold on a hold on, hold on a second. You're saying you've read all of those documents and more than once? But all of this has to be like top secret confidential stuff, right? So why? My family has a reading room. It's just like this at our home. Ours is bigger, of course, and not as dusty. Huh? Hmm. Members of the Tohokami family have access to any variety of government-related uh, documents. That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. How is that possible? So in other words, I already told you. There's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. <laughs> My family is a member of that council. And I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. <laughs> to become such a ruler, I must know all levels of this world backwards and forwards. So whenever I have time, I'd like to review whatever documents and, the, and materials that interest me. Which is why I can proclaim without a doubt the materials gathered here are the real thing. This is beyond believing or not believing. Bayakuya is actually starting to scare me more than the actual mastermind. Hmm. And what always interested me were the most cold, were, were the mirror, the, what interested, little, 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 wow words, what interested me the most were the cold case police investigation reports. Reading through those reports has always been a hobby of mine ever since I was little. The excellent mental exercise, I solved more than one of the few, one of, more than a few cold cases just by reviewing the reports. Among all the reports, one of my most recent favorites is the Genocide Jack case. He always talked. Bayakuya grabbed a specific file from the fi from the shell. That's right. This is the complete file case. Every single report surrounding the Genocide Jack cases have been compiled in here. Hmm. Because there are so many, allow me to quickly summarize the main points. To begin with, there are two notable characteristics in every Genocide Jack murder. The first characteristic is that every crime scene, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. And the second is that the victims are all murdered. Uh, is that when the when the victims are murdered, their bodies are suspended in a certain way. Bloodlust written in blood, and the victim's body is suspended. It is exactly the same as what happened to Chihiro. Save your surprise. The best part is yet to come. For the second characteristic, where the victims are suspended. The only ones who knew about the particular fact were members of the police on the, on, in higher-ups. By all account, nobody in the media has ever found out. Huh? In other words, no one knows, no one online, nobody knew about the aspect of the, each crime. The only key officials and the killer himself knew about the act of mounting the victim. Hmm. Now, if you can recall Chihiro's corpse, her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. How could the killer have known s about suspending the victim? That's, right. That's the key question. In fact, the answer is quite simple. So the culprit words, isn't a copycat killer. It's the real Genocide Jack. The, that right there is evidence that Genocide Jack is in himself among the rest of us. That the, the Genocide Jack really is. Such a brutal, fiendish killer really walking among us. Hmm. Hmm. Things are really starting to get interesting, aren't they? I imagine the killer would, which such reputation would ever even become part of our little game. Now, do you think that it would be good for you to take a look at what you've already seen? You might as well ferret out a, a clue or two. If you've gotten... If you get down on your knees and beg, I might even show you myself. Oh my gosh, what? So we're fetching out a clue or two. They reveal the ones with real power, the secret council controlling everything from beneath the shadows. They detail the people who control the world from behind the scenes. Dangerous, the truth for a commoner. Well, are you going to look? Now we already saw that. Also already saw that. And we saw this too. Why do I feel like I'm missing something? Um, Bayakuya, about Genocide Jack's case file. Could you let me see it? Fine. 
Well, you didn't beg, but I guess it's okay this time. Feel free to look at it here, but you can't take it with you. Bayakuya handed me the file, and I flipped through it with tense, nervous fingers. Suddenly, my hand stopped. I had reached the page where the photos of the scheme of each crime had been collected. The names of the Genocide Jack victims ran on its for several pages. Ken Harda, 32. Tensuhiro Honda, 17. Soji Gaku, 23. Hano Isai, 14. Takashi Yoshi, uh, Yoshida, 30. Komasuna Toro. Takifumi Gono. Uchida Nahisha. Takashi Masamune. Yudo Yumijima. There's no end to it. One thing can became perfectly clear as I read. The killer's countless victims were killed and suspended in exactly the same way, and at the scene of every murder, the word bloodlust was left in the victim's own blood. Hmm. Now take a look at the next page, and you'll find another interesting tidbit. The next page. Profiling results. All the crimes took place either on the weekdays at night, during the holidays, or either day or either day or night. The most common time for the killings to take place were on holidays in the afternoon. Based on these facts, I can suggest that the suspect may be a student. Evidence suggests the suspect lingered at the scene, but when they did leave, they were in a panic. Because an eyewitness has never come forward, it's unlikely that there is any external reason for this. This is confused behavior. This confused behavior suggests that the suspect may potentially suffer from dissociative identity disorder. So, in other words. The key point here is that the culprit may as well have, been, have a split personality. A split personality? Like the kind of thing you see on TV? So I'm part of another totally unbelievable story. But this one is way more unbelievable than anything else up to now. Or, maybe it really isn't. I don't know. I feel like my mind has gone numb. Genocide Jack case files is added to the truth bullets. Alright, we should go so get going soon. Huh? Where are we going? Anywhere but here. We finished our business here, haven't we? Oh, wait. Bayakuya. As usual, Bayakuya turned and left with another, without another word. I hurried out of the library to catch up. Well, this is where we part ways. I have some things I need to take care of before the class trial. Huh? Just all of a sudden, like that? Come on, enough of your annoying mis misapprehensions. Did you really think we'd be working together the whole time? Take responsibility for yourself and go do something useful. Move the investigation forward on your own. Bye. And just like that, he was gone. Just as quickly as he asked me to join him, he cut me off. In the end, I feel like I was just some plaything getting tossed around. At the same time, I'd uncovered some really important clues to thanks to him. Genocide Jack. He's the one that killed Chihiro. He and that murderous fr friend is one of us. Fiend is one of us. But who is it? I have to find out, no matter what it takes. And to do that, there's somewhere I have to go investigate one more time. I have to get back to the crime scene, the girls' locker room. I should check the boys' locker room, too. And the others might have come up with some info, so that might be useful while I'm at it. I need to find everything that I can. So, girls' locker room. So it says I need to check the girls' locker room again, and then go to the boys' locker room. Ding, ding, ding. Hifumi has discovered evidence of revealing the identity of the culprit. Hmm. Another stat increase for me. Evidence? What did you find? Mm -hmm. I cannot reveal that just yet. But I guarantee that what I found will steal the killer's breath from his lungs. Are you sure about that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Ludenberg said she witnessed something worthwhile, too. Really? What did she see? She refused to tell me. It's like when a girl bullies the boy she likes, right? Right? Okay, so where's Celeste now? The warehouse by the dorms. She was there, but at the same time, not there. What's it gonna be? Uh, we go to the girls' locker room first. That's what it's gonna be. Hey, Kyoko. Have you made any progress in your investigation? 
generally speaking. However, but I have to get going. I have something I related to take care of. Something besides the investigation. What is it? Well, Nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. What? So then. Before I go, let me give you a piece of advice. Should you examine, you should examine Chihiro's body one more time thoroughly. Also, her handbook is missing. You might want to determine its whereabouts. Goodbye. That's it. I'll be praying for your success. With that, Kyoko turned and left the girl's locker room. I guess I'll take another look at the body then. And Chihiro's handbook is missing? That's definitely worth, definitely worth worrying about. E handbook. Chihiro's e handbook has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. We examine Chihiro's body one more time. Kyoko said I should examine the body one more time. I know she did thoroughly, but do I have? I do have my limits. I'd better give it another shot anyway. Let's see. Chihiro's hands are bound with what looks like some kind of rope. The rope was used to prop her up in kind of a crucifix position. Huh? The rope had as a plug. Wait, so then it isn't a rope at all. The more that I think about it, the more it, that that's not the only thing that concerns me. Chihiro's fatal injury was a blow to the head, which means somebody struck her in the head in order to kill her. That's right. There's no issue. There's, n there's the issue of her being suspended and the fatal blow. At first, I didn't see a reason to think much about them, uh, either of them. Seeing them again, after looking through the Genocide Jack file, something's not quite right. What does this all mean? Status of the dead body has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Well, there's one more thing that most likely to tie all of these mysteries together. Is it the true nature of the rope that was used to suspense Chihiro? And to figure it out, there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. Plus, it might help to look at the Genocide Jack case file one more time. So, go back to the library. Damn. Chihiro's presence was especially weak. Her body, her soul. No to target such a helpless being is unforgivable. What wretched beast do to do such a thing? I cannot forgive this. We already did that. This door leads out to the pool. Oh, we can't go there? Apparently not. There's still... Oh, there's still more that I need to check. We already went through this. Oh, there he is. The bloodstained poster. The big breasted swimsuit model is pretty noticeable too. The girls locker room doesn't seem like a kind of place you'd find something like this. Now I can leave the girls' locker room. Also said to check the boys' locker room, so we'll do that. There's a strange stain on the carpet. What is it? Boys' locker room carpet has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Huh? This poster. It's a popular boy band called Tornado. This somehow doesn't quite fit in the boys' locker room. Oh, but wait. That reminds me. The poster in the other locker room is... That's right. That definitely says that there's something strange about this. In the boys' locker room, there's a poster of a popular boy band. And in the girls' locker room, there's a poster of a big-breasted swimsuit model. Could the posters have been switched? But if they were, why? What reason would anybody have? Maybe we should talk to somebody who knows a little bit more about the locker rooms.
So who would know more about the locker room? Warehouse by the dorms. Would Sakura know again? You spend a lot of time exercising in the girls' locker room, right, Sakura? I spent. I, it used to be nearly every day since I opened it. Opened up. Sometimes Hina and I use it together. Okay, then let me ask you something. Do you think the posters in the boys' and girls' locker rooms could have been switched? I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't really say. I never paid attention to the posters. I see. However. But there is something that's been bothering me about the locker room. You see, I like to drink a little protein coffee every time I finish exercising. We have protein coffee in the warehouse. It's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass after exercising. Anyway, the other day I spilt some on the carpet in the girls' locker room, and it left a stain. A stain? But I don't see any stain in the carpet now. Exactly. I noticed it earlier, but the stain has disappeared. I can only assume that somebody came along and cleaned it up. But still, isn't it unusually clean, as if there was never a stain here to begin with? The disappearing stain has been added to the truth bullets. Also notice somebody switched this. Somebody switched the carpets and the posters. Why? Like, I don't see the point in switching the posters. Then again, I also don't have the brain that would be like, let me kill somebody right now. Like, Okay, yeah, we still had those two things. I was like, I thought we still had stuff up here, and then I was going to go to the warehouse. I know it's around somewhere. Where? Huh? It's gone. Did somebody take it out of the archive? The only one who would do something like that. I can't think of anyone but Bayakua. Or Bayaki. Whatever. I failed that time. I, I will admit to failing that. The desk lamp. Bayakuya grabbed the one thing from over here and put it over here. It sure is dark over there. There's a thick layer of dust on top of the desk. Maybe there's some kind of clue here. Guess not. The shelf is packed up with books looking at. Maybe there's some kind of clue here. Guess not. According to this letter, Hope Peaks Academy had stopped functioning as a school. And what's more, it didn't even happen recently. It happened. It closed down over a year ago. The mastermind probably took over and abandoned the school to start this killing game, which explains why these there aren't any other students here, because it's not a real school. And then there's this, these serious issues that stopped the school and closed down in the first place. Is there any connection between that and what's happening to us now? The mastermind's motive. If we can figure out why they would want to imprison us here... That would be enough to get us out. Or... Huh? The lamp won't turn on. Oh, I see. It's not plugged in. 
the lamp cord isn't long enough to reach the outlet from here. And the last time I saw it, it was definitely on, and it was definitely right here. Oh, right. Byakuya was using the extension cord. But there's no extension cord here now. I wonder if... Library desk lamp has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Oh, there's stuff in the dining hall, too. I've never been in this room before, so this will be interesting. This will be a new room. Hey, Celeste. Celeste, what are you doing here? <laughs> this warehouse is amazing. It is absolutely everything one might need to live a full, full life. From food to clothes to towels, there's an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but... Have you found anything related to the case? I knew you would. Uh, you were going to ask me that. I thought uh, talking about the warehouse itself might dis misdirect you, but I see that it was pointless. When I find, when did you find something? <laughs> Very well, I will tell you, and only you. Actually. Last night, I was here. I saw her here. Tahiro was in the warehouse. Wait, really? Mm -hmm. This was right before night time. Mm -hmm. What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Oh my gosh, mom's calling me. Hold on. I guess I could have technically played the cutscene because there was a talkative one, but whatever, it's fine, and we got it. Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> she stuffed that jacket into her bag in a hurry, and it was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that. She was gone. Yes, I assumed that she'd merely be stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but it would appear she ignored the nighttime rule and her headed directly to the girls' block room. If she hadn't broken a rule, none of this would have ever happened. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. So apparently, she went to the girls' block room at late at night in order to exercise without even anyone knowing. But the strange thing is... There was no trace of the track jacket or duffel bag. Celeste said she saw Chihiro carrying, which means the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. Celeste's account. I should probably check this room a little bit more thorough than I did. Considering it's the first time I've been here, I don't know. This is one of the monitors, Mama Kuna. Okay, we need that. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. This is one of the monitors Mama Kuna appears on right now. It's just showing the school crest. I wonder when the class trial is going to start. Okay, so we're probably close. Does that mean that we're really close to class, to class trial time? They're all kind of stuff piled up everywhere. Towels, jackets. Looks like they put together some good collection of school equipment.
There's all kinds of stuff piled up everywhere. Towels, jackets, it looks like they put together a good collection of school equipment. These just Wait, is that gonna say the same thing? Probably. Don't see anything noteworthy. Is this the fridge Sayaka mentioned? I don't see anything noteworthy here. There's all different kinds of food stacked up. I don't see anything noteworthy. Last night. We already saw this. Okay. Well, the dining hall said it had something for us, so we'll go there to see maybe if something else is... out of place, you know. Hina's here. Oh, Hina, how's Toko doing? Mm. Same as before. She won't come out, and she just keeps mumbling about something about genocide Jack. <laughs> so, I left her there. You left her? My head was all swimmy, and I was getting pretty hungry. Yeah. But don't worry, I'm gonna head back as soon as I'm done eating. Toko isn't exactly pleasant, but I'm still worried about her. Speaking of which, what are you eating? <gasps> A donut, of course! Of course. There's two things that I'm sure God created. Outer space and donuts. Really? Mm. I bet Chihiro would have liked to eat more donuts. Maybe that was one of her big regrets. Ah, uh, I should have tried to spend more time with her. Come to think of it, who did spend time with her? Me! I spent time with her because I was actually starting to enjoy her company. And then she died. Because of course... I literally hung out with her three times, the most out of anybody else, but you know, that that's fine, it's okay, it's whatever. Well. Yeah, she was a little bit strange, didn't really hang out or do things with the other girls much, because she was an introvert and you're a big extrovert. It was like, like she was trying to keep her distance from us. Actually, Sakura said something similar. She said even though that you had invited her, and, or invited Chihiro to exercise with you, she always refused. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And it wasn't just us either. It was like she stayed away from all the girls. Was she just shy? Mm. I don't know. She talked to the boys all the time. I guess technically I'm a, a guy, so yeah, she did. Isn't it kind of weird to be shy around your own sex, but be totally fine with the opposite <gasps> sex? Oh, wait, maybe. Maybe she was used to guys spoiling her. The law says you can't judge a book by its cover, right? You think so? I never really saw her as that kind of girl. Aoi's account has been added to the truth bullet sections of the handbook. Oh! We actually... Um, so, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? Monokuma? It's the moment you've all been waiting for! The class trial! You remember where to meet, right? Yeah, I do. Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. Begin the class trial or it's about to begin. The red door is right through here. And in the next episode, we'll find out who the killer is. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys all then.